Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, The Ins and Outs of Integrating WooCommerce and NetSuite, where we will discuss the advantages of automating your e-commerce operations by integrating WooCommerce with your ERP and specifically NetSuite. My name is Sin Langston, and I will be your moderator for today's webcast. With us today is Basang Milanov, Head of Product Development and Sales at Nova Module, and Rico Andrade, VP of Marketing at Saligo. As a reminder, this webinar will be recorded and a link to the recording will be sent to all webinar re registrants. Also, please be sure to submit your questions at any time in the Q&A panel and we will address them at the end of this presentation. With that, I'll hand the mic over to Rico to kick things off. Thank you, Sin, and uh, thank you everyone who's joining in. We see that uh, there are people all over the world right now, so um, we're glad to be talking to you in this uh, morning in California. Um, quick agenda here. Today, uh, we're going to quickly just explain Saligo's integration platform, especially in our relationship with NetSuite, and do an interview with uh, Nova Module, who's uh, one of our partners and the WooCommerce and NetSuite expert um, in this uh, webinar. Very briefly integrate, uh, uh, discuss the integration between e-commerce uh, platforms and ERP in general and some of the options specifically for uh, integrating uh, WooCommerce to NetSuite. And then after that, we're going to go actually into a demonstration of a pre-built uh, WooCommerce NetSuite integration app that uh, Nova Module has built that takes many of the use cases that are common uh, for that particular integration and uh, packages in a single standalone application. And then also demonstration in terms of how to do uh, more custom integrations between these two applications where uh, it may not necessarily be in the pre-built smart connector but can uh, be easily added and then we'll take questions but feel free to add uh, questions as we go along in the chat so for those of you who don't know Saligo um, if you've been in the NetSuite ecosystem chances are you do uh, you have heard of Saligo before we are currently the largest NetSuite partner uh, we have over 2200 NetSuite customers um, and we really came out of the NetSuite ecosystem. We've been inside of NetSuite for over 10 years now. We see ourselves as a, an iPaaS integration platform uh, that is built really for the ideal uh, NetSuite customer. Um, we serve all verticals. We serve um, all platforms. We are not just NetSuite agnostic, but we do have an unparalleled expertise on the NetSuite side and for many of you who purchased NetSuite and uh, used Salesforce and got the NetSuite Salesforce Smart Connector um, that uh, which was sold by NetSuite that Smart Connector actually came from uh, Saligo so we're the ones that power that uh, NetSuite uh, integration and uh, we also own the Cloud Extend uh, brand which does the NetSuite to Excel, NetSuite to Gmail, NetSuite to Outlook uh, integrations and are very popular as well. And as, uh, as with uh, the Saligo products, you can go to saligo.com and actually start using and trying these integrations for free. Um, and uh, you'll get one integration flow in perpetuity that is commonly used for things such as uh, NetSuite to FTP, NetSuite to SQL Server, or NetSuite to uh, offload file cabinet into some database. So we have many, many pre-built uh, adapters, uh, integration, uh, connectors uh, for different applications and we've abstracted the APIs for many of them so they're available in the drop-down menu inside of our product uh, but if uh, you don't see an application inside of um, in the drop-down menu for a product we also have other ways that you can connect to it through uh, REST API adapters or FTP adapters or web services adapters that make it much easier to integrate um, with any application that's out there without having to go into the suite script um, and just leveraging the platform to do the integration for you. And Nova Module is one of our largest partners. Uh, they are a solution provider, a systems integrator, um, and as well as a tech partner that's building pre-built integrations uh, for uh, NetSuite customers on Saligo's iPaaS. Um, so these are standalone applications that uh, you can uh, leverage uh, that's built by Nova Module. They include the very popular NetSuite to ShipStation, NetSuite to Shipwire, Magento One, uh, Returnly, and uh, the WooCommerce to NetSuite integration that uh, we're going to demonstrate today. Um, 
So also Nova Module is a longtime uh, Oracle SDN partner. So you can also find these applications in uh, sweetapp.com. And we're very excited that the Basong is here to share more about this integration with us. And so um, in terms of uh, connecting e-commerce platform to ERP, uh, this is for most people who are using e-commerce and have adopted an ERP, this is a fairly obvious um, use case because the integration and the ability to deliver and automate uh, the orders and the whole uh, value chain of e-commerce through your uh, ERP into fulfillment is critically important in this age where you're competing with Amazon, um, where things need to be uh, fulfilled immediately, they need to be fulfilled perfectly, and you just don't have a lot of resources to do everything manually. Um, so oftentimes integration on the e-commerce level happen is one of the top priorities for any e-commerce company and um, you know the companies who are doing that and do that early and do that well tend to be the ones that are most agile um, and it is also the most common integration use cases for NetSuite customer as well um, so what do people typically do to integrate um, a lot of people do try to do it themselves or hire out, uh, and they're focusing very much on uh, custom integrations, going directly into the code using sweet scripts uh, and, and, and other um, code, uh, which require quite a few technical resources, and now you're in the business of having to uh, depend on technical resources every time that that's being updated. And it is very common, and these typically tend to work best when it's a somewhat simple use case that's unlikely to change. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they are more labor intensive and, and don't, don't allow for a lot of flexibility and you have to build a lot of the um, mechanisms such as guaranteed data delivery and data governments, uh, governance when you are coding it yourself that way. There's also native integrations uh, that many people leverage. Um, on the NetSuite side, most of those native integrations tend to be with the actual financial applications such as uh, Avalara or Tipalti. Um, and not as much on the e-commerce side. And so that's where um, many of the e-commerce applications such as Shopify or uh, Magento or um, BigCommerce or you know, 3PLs, EDI, tend to leverage a platform like Soligo to do that. Then there's a three, the third-party pre-built integrations. Uh, there are several vendors out there. Um, and this is something that Nova Module and Soligo offers, but there is one key difference in terms of these pre-built integrations is that they are built on an iPaaS, uh, which is a full integration platform that um, allows you to uh, quickly connect to many different applications. And what's important about this is that these are very robust in the sense that because they're built on the nine pass, it makes it much easier to expand use cases or customize or uh, be able to handle volumes that you normally uh, can't do with less flexible pre-built integrations. Um, so in essence, um, I want to talk a little bit, because the WooCommerce use case is very uh, straightforward and common for most of the uh, uh, integration use cases, uh, this is where a pre-built integration does make a lot of sense. Um, and uh, the, the main uh, reasons, you know, you can do it without IT. Uh, it really allows you to uh, ensure data integrity through um, the essentially a proven technology that uh, you've been able to leverage many customers from uh, and get improved on that. And then it also has additional uh, functionality built in, such as being able to monitor and manage and you know, make it much easier to do mappings or check for errors and control these things uh, when thing, things like that happen. So at this point, I wanna pass off uh, the uh, baton to Basang to talk uh, specifically about uh, the common use cases on the um, WooCommerce to NetSuite integrations and uh, the specific uh, functionality of the smart connector that he built as a result. Take it away, Basan. Thank you so much, Rico. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Basan Malinov. I'm um, with uh, Nova Module. And uh, what I'd like to do, I'm with Nova Module product development team and implementation. Um, so, as Rico pointed out, we uh, do build uh, our um, integration products uh, on top of the Saligos platform. Um, 
so we do have a number of products uh, that we have already successfully built and uh, implement for our uh, customers. So feel free to uh, check out our website, uh, novamodule.com. And as you scroll down, you will see different options here, pre-built integrations with NetSuite. You can drill down and uh, you can uh, get a lot more details here. You can always uh, get in touch with us by uh, sending us an email at hello at novamodule.com and uh, we'll be sure to uh, to connect with you uh, individually. So with that, uh, what I wanted to do is to give you an overview of the uh, WooCommerce to NetSuite integration. Um, so I have several tabs open here. Uh, as, as you've seen here at Nova Module uh, website, Saligo website, that's uh, really the platform that we embrace and love and uh, like to work uh, on. Um, other tabs that I have open here is uh, the integration platform. This is our demo account, and uh, this is the WooCommerce to NetSuite uh, connected that we'll be uh, speaking about today. Uh, I do have the WooCommerce demo environment uh, as well, and uh, several NetSuite tabs uh, that I already have uh, pre-opened here, so we can uh, save time and uh, while we review certain uh, data that uh, gets synced between the two systems. So with that, uh, let me uh, switch over to the integrated.io um, account of mine. And that's, as I mentioned, that's a demo account. Uh, the way it works is once a license is provisioned uh, for a particular connector, in this case, it is WooCommerce to NetSuite connector, uh, and it's typically provisioned into the uh, email address associated with the um, associated with the account, then you will um, go through the installation process. So our implementation team does help you uh, along the way from start to finish. Uh, from the installation, um, configuration, user acceptance testing slash UAT, and uh, get you ready to the, uh, for, for the go live. So uh, again, once the uh, connect is installed, you will see this uh, product tile being available uh, in your my in your my integrations section uh, of the platform, and uh, as you click into the connector, then uh, you will see uh, several uh, integration flows um, that are represented here on the left side. Um, I want to start with the uh, connections here. So we basically what we do is we um, provision. Uh, once we provision a license, then you can install a bundle uh, in your NetSuite account. And uh, typically we install two bundles there. One bundle is um, the core integrated.io bundle, uh, which is the Soligo bundle. Uh, and I even remember the uh, bundle number, it's 20038. And the second bundle is the WooCommerce to NetSuite connector. That is developed by uh, Nova module and uh, you will absolutely need to have that bundle in order for the connector to work. Um, we also provide a plugin that uh, our company developed, and that plugin is for your WooCommerce instance. So once you have the plugin uh, available and installed in your WooCommerce instance, then you will connect that uh, to to it um, to, to your um, instance of WooCommerce using the API keys. Uh, on the NetSuite side, we too do support both uh, ways. So we support token-based authentication and uh, we support basic authentication. In recent months, uh, we have been using only token-based authentication and that's only for good reasons, uh, just to make sure that uh, the data is securely uh, being passed uh, to and from NetSuite. So that's the... Uh, connectivity part. So what I'd like to do now is to start walking you through a particular uh, transaction um, that touches pretty much all of these uh, data flows. So the main idea is that uh, you have a website, let's say it's nike.com, and uh, you'll list your products out there. Um, if someone wants to purchase a product, they go through the checkout process, and uh, at the end of the day, what you have is you have a sales order, um, that is uh, be, that, that is recorded in your uh, backend WooCommerce uh, system. So as you click into the sales order, uh, and uh, luckily enough, we have Ringo Star here uh, placing in sales order. Um, so Ringo wants to buy cool gear, and we get um, 
it, it costs seventy dollars quantities two and uh, WooCommerce basically calculates all the details here. Mine the state tax is calculated at ten ten dollars and fifty cents, and that is based on your tax uh, setting uh, sales tax setting in your WooCommerce uh, instance. So uh, with that, uh, once a sales order is placed, uh, what happens is, and in, see, like in this case, it's placed in the processing status. So you do define your own uh, rules in terms of what uh, that order status is going to be uh, when uh, folks place uh, sales orders on your website. And uh, with the help of this data flow, which is sales order uh, from sales order import from WooCommerce into NetSuite, and with the help of the customer uh, data flow uh, that brings customer data from WooCommerce inst into NetSuite, we're successfully uh, creating a sales order in NetSuite. So uh, I want to say that these two data flows uh, work hand in hand together. So for example, if someone places a sales order on the WooCommerce side and uh, that customer does not exist in NetSuite, we automatically behind the scenes kick, kick off this data flow, which actually creates a customer in NetSuite first and then attaches the sales order to it. Um, so in the advanced settings here, uh, you do have an option to specify what order status you want to use as a trigger. So in this case, uh, it is processing. And uh, typically, these two options, uh, these two boxes, I use when we uh, basically cut clients over to, uh, to to turn the data flows live. Uh, when we do that, we specify like a particular day and uh, and time associated with it according to the GMT time zone. And uh, based on that, only transactions after this particular date will be uh, processed. And that relates to the customer data and the uh, order data. Um, there are some other settings that we uh, work with you uh, to configure uh, during the implementation uh, phase of uh, of the project. Uh, one of them would be the discounting. So in NetSuite, you can dis define your uh, discount item type. You can call it WooCommerce. You can call it anything you want. Uh, and then um, once you press the circular errors here, it actually sucks the data out of NetSuite into this uh, user interface. And with that, you can uh, pick what item discount item type, in this case, you want to use for discounting. Um, another feature that we have here, or rather a setting, is uh, in NetSuite, you can uh, create a dummy customer or a default customer and call it WooCommerce customer. So what the integration is going to do in this case, if you specify so, uh, let's say that you're going to put the internal ID of that customer record in NetSuite, then uh, all the sales orders will be associated with that customer record in NetSuite. And uh, that is really uh, cool because sometimes we do uh, have live, live clients who use this functionality and they absolutely like it. Instead of creating different uh, individual sale, uh, customer records in NetSuite, they can just use one customer record. But it's not always the case. So you could really um, create an individual customer record if you want. And that customer record in NetSuite could be um, a, um, a, a company type or an individual type, depending on the, on, on the preference. Um, so I'll get to these uh, settings in just a few seconds here, but uh, let's uh, just kind of get back to the overall use case. So now that we have Ringo placed a uh, sales order, we, uh, we're using this data flow. And actually, to save time, I already pre uh, kind of I already ran all these data flows earlier today. So what I'm going to show you is basically the um, this is the sales order import flow. So as you can see here, all these transactions were processed. So I want to give you a glimpse of what the sales order looks like in NetSuite. So uh, sales order is created. Uh, it's already in build status because, as I mentioned, I already uh, ran those uh, transactions early today to save time. Um, but uh, initially, when a sales order is created in NetSuite by the connector, it will go into pending uh, fulfillment status. Now, if you want to change that status, you can totally do that so you can uh with the with the connector all you all you need to do is just to specify to us hey uh we actually want to uh use a uh, different status for it and what i'm showing you a robust set of mapping 
tools that uh, Saligo and Integrate.io uh, makes available to all the users uh, on the platform. So um, as, as, as you probably saw, I went to the sales order data flow and uh, looked at uh, and basically uh, initialized mappings. Uh, once I go to the sales order import uh, mapping, then I will see all these options. On the left side would be uh, the WooCommerce fields on the right side would be NetSuite fields. So when you press the circular errors here, if you see it actually is reaching out to that particular instance of NetSuite that this connector is connected to, and it's getting all those fields from that particular record uh, into, in, it's basically loading into this view. So in this case, uh, I always use this term uh, when I try to explain this is like point and shoot mapping. So you just really uh, specify a record that you want to um, to work with. And then on that record, you specify a field. So uh, I think I was talking about status. Uh, so let's just, um, let me give you an idea here. So status, status internal ID would be uh, something that we can hard code in the integration and we can say, hey, instead of pending fulfillment, always send it to pending approval because maybe for some reason you guys want to uh, review all these orders as they get into NetSuite. And then when you save that, then uh, we can be sure that all these orders that go from WooCommerce into NetSuite will go into NetSuite in pending approval status. So uh, with that, I just wanted to give you uh, a sense of how the mappings work. Um, the other set of very popular mappings here on the sales order would be the payment method and the shipping method. So if the payment method is in play here, so we'll go and uh, look at the actual payment method mapping and uh, we already have this pre-mapped. Like for example, American Express will be mapping to your American Express payment um, method in NetSuite, uh, MasterCard to MasterCard, etc. You can create a dummy one if you want um, and you have this option here. So if uh, if the mapping does not exist uh, for any of these payment methods, uh, you can always default to a um, to any payment method that you want uh, on your customer record. I mean, on, on your customer record in NetSuite. Um, so that's uh, how robust this uh, mapping tool is. Uh, since I'm talking about mapping, I also want to uh, give you uh, a sense that we can do the multi-field mapping using all these functions. Uh, sometimes uh, they're very handy because if you'd like to massage data uh, to some degree uh, during the um, transition um, or transfer during the transfer from uh, WooCommerce to NetSuite or from any system to any system, um, then uh, you can use any of these um, functions. And it could be multi-field, so you can uh, concatenate field, you can um, build some cer certain uh, logic into it, um, you can do lookups, uh, as I mentioned, value to value, or you can do a dy dynamic lookup. Dynamic lookup is pretty cool. You can do a lot of good things uh, with this dynamic lookup uh, as well. So um, that's another reason why we like and embrace the platform because uh, every day it just becomes better and better and uh, we don't have to necessarily uh, be developers, at least uh, on our side, implementation in, in, implementation team to uh, to do a good uh, a lot of good things uh, with the data. Um, so that's uh, really on the sales orders and customers. So in this case, we have already seen that uh, the sales order uh, was sent to uh, NetSuite, and uh, once that sales order goes into pending fulfillment status, then at that point, we don't really care what you do with that as long as you have a corresponding fulfillment record uh, to uh, to basically to close that sales order uh, for the shipping uh, portion. So in that case, um, you can send that sales order to your 3PL. Uh, that 3PL can go ahead and uh, fulfill that sales order, send the tracking uh, data back to you. Uh, as I mentioned, all we care is really uh, to see the item shipment uh, or item fulfillment record in NetSuite in a shipped status. And uh, if they do provide the, the um, tracking number, that's great. Uh, so in this case, uh, it could be one tracking number. If they have multiple tracking numbers, let's say uh, on this customer record against the shipment that is also supported, we will bring that into uh, WooCommerce. So um, now that we have the item fulfillment record, now we need to notify 
uh, WooCommerce that this order is shipped and the tracking number is available and the carrier information is also available, including the carrier and including the uh, shipping method uh, in this case. So, uh, in order to accomplish that, we uh, we use the fulfillment data flow that we call, and this fulfillment data flow is um, synced from uh, NetSuite to WooCommerce. So in this particular case, uh, everything's been already also pre-mapped. Uh, so we're basically mapping the shipping method to the provider fields in WooCommerce. Uh, we're specifying the date of the transaction, the tracking number, and let me just call you. Uh, let, let me show you the shipping method mapping here as well. Um, so on this is a static lookup. For example, in this case, we have FedEx ground and it's going to FedEx. So again, I already ran the uh, fulfillment data flow. And um, as you can see here on this sales order, um, here is the FedEx. This is the um, carrier that was selected on the item fulfillment record in that suite. And this is the tracking number associated with that. So that's the um, that's really the extent of it. Uh, if you do have multiple uh, shipments, if you have multiple tracking numbers here, they will also be available in this um, in this view. Um, so again, keep in mind that the status of this is processing. Um, so not something that WooCommerce automatically changes, but we have a solution for it. Uh, I will speak about that in just a few moments here. Um, from that point on, uh, once you process the fulfillment in NetSuite, your order will go into pending billing status. So that means that you need to create either a cash sale record uh, to close out the, the accounting part of the transaction in NetSuite, or you need to create an invoice depending um, depending on what payment method or terms that you used. So um, when you look at the payment tab uh, here, you will see that the payment method is check. Uh, and again, this is used just for demonstration purposes. Uh, because the payment method is populated, uh, what's going to happen is upon billing a sales order, it's going to generate a cash sale record. Now, for some reason, if you had terms here, let's say if you have a B2B customer uh, that you sell um, on that you sell to on terms, net 15, net 30, net 45, what have you, uh, that is also uh, that can be pre-mapped uh, as well. And uh, upon billing that sales order, uh, instead of a cash sale, you will have a uh, an invoice record uh, that you can uh, create in NetSuite and uh, send it to the customer. So if you have 5,000 orders in a day, we don't expect you to go into NetSuite and press a build button uh, on a sales order 5,000 times. That's just uh, not practical. So we do have a set of data flows that automatically bill a sales order in the pending uh, billing status. So in this case, if you uh, want to generate a cash sale, you can use this data flow. If you want to generate an invoice, you can use this data flow uh, right here. You can use both if you want. Uh, that is also uh, an option. But uh, you will need to work with the forms, uh, sales order forms, to make sure that the right forms are being uh, used uh, for these types of transactions. Um, so again, advanced settings uh, here allow you to uh, change the uh, setting, so you can uh, build your sales orders. Uh, if you have uh, fulfillment ahead of uh, billing enabled in NetSuite, you can actually bill your sales order while it's in pending fulfillment status. And that's really, uh, you can just change this uh, option here and save. Uh, in our case, we're using pending billing and uh, that's what we did in order to create the cash sale record. So when this sales order was in pending uh, billing status, we ran the data flow and it generated uh, the cash sale record here. So that's, uh, that's really kind of the functionality here. Um, and whatever the form that you want to use, that's totally fine. We can uh, call a specific form on any of the uh, records. So we can, uh, if like you have a specific cash sale form that designated to be a WooCommerce cash sale form, uh, as long as you create it, then we can call it uh, through the integration and only use that uh, particular form. Um, and that applies to all the uh, other uh, forms in NetSuite. 
So with that, uh, once we build a sales order and the cash sale is already there, uh, then the sales order goes into build uh, status. That means that you already send the product, uh, you already uh, build the product in that suite. And now, uh, as you can, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the status of the sales order is still processing. So uh, WooCommerce doesn't change that automatically. Uh, unless you have uh, some customizations done to it. So what we uh, what we did, um, and it was a suggestion from one of our customers, is actually we created another data flow that will change the status of that sales order in WooCommerce. So that would be this last data flow here uh, in this view, which is update WooCommerce order status. In this case, uh, which is basically saying if you if we scroll down to the advanced setting in the advanced settings section here, we can say that uh, change the status of a WooCommerce order to complete uh, when uh, a sales order is in build status. So based on that, um, if we uh, run this data flow, for example, now I think it's uh, going to go ahead and uh, change that status. So let's see. Uh, if it actually does that. But that's the whole idea behind this is because you want this uh, order to be, uh, the status to be changed so you don't pick the sales order up again and again and again, and for your reporting purposes as well, uh, because you want to uh, keep track of the uh, orders that are in uh, complete status. So that's really uh, the functionality on the sales uh, order uh, related flows. So it's in progress right now, it's executing. Um, so once it's done and it looks like it's done now, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this uh, sales order and uh, the status should be completed. So now that you see that the status is turned to completed because we already uh, fulfilled the sales order, build that sales order, and now we pretty much hands off at this point. Um, so um, let me move on to the uh, next uh, set of data flows uh, that we have in the connector. And um, I want to talk about the product related flows, really the inventory quantity and the product data. So let's, let me start with the inventory quantity data flows. Uh, when you look at your products, uh, let's say in this case, maybe uh, we're gonna use the same uh, product here and it's cool gear system 64 ounces water bottle um, while it's opening up here uh, I want to show you that uh, so we have the product title uh, description all these generic fields are pre-populated here so you have the product price sale price uh, you have inventory uh, this is the SKU number and if you have your manage manage uh, stock checkbox checked then you will see the stock quantity being uh, uh, what it is now, so 1,098 units available in um, in your uh, WooCommerce uh, instance. So if we look at this uh, product uh, here in um, in NetSuite, uh, when we go to the inventory tab, then we will see that uh, quantity available in Ken in in our Kentucky location uh, is. Uh, let me see, it's. Uh, 1098, so it's the same as in um, WooCommerce. So what what happens is if when when a quantity when a quantity is changed in NetSuite, uh, the connector will recognize that uh, event and will uh, log this uh, for processing. So uh, let me maybe try to do this. Uh, I already created the inventory adjustment form here, and I'm adjusting this by 200 uh, for this Kentucky location and uh, the quantity, the new quantity should be 1298. So let me go ahead and save this record uh, in NetSuite. And uh, what it does, it actually um, changes the quantity in um, on, for this item in that location. So assuming that this is uh, saved now, then we should see uh, 200 more uh, units available in the Kentucky location. So let's just make sure that that's the case. And I already know that this is the case because I've seen that. So that's 1298. Now your WooCommerce uh, item still showing 1098. So what we what we can do is we can run this data flow now and it's going to go ahead and uh, update uh, the quantity. Uh, and while it's doing that, I will uh, talk 
talk about the different types of the uh, mass up, uh, of the updates that we have. So let me uh, kick off this data flow and let me go back to the settings here um, and to the inventory. So on the inventory, we do have two data flows. The first one is the uh, what I call a delta data flow. So uh, it's basically uh, detecting a change to an item quantity in NetSuite and uh, sending updates only for those items that changed the quantity since the last time the data flow ran. Now, uh, another data flow that we have here is called mass update. Mass update, uh, another name for it is a true up um, data flow. You can schedule it to run uh, once a night, for example, and what happens is it doesn't care whether uh, quantity changed from the last time the data for flow executed or not, it's just going to update all the quantities for across all of your WooCommerce items, uh, if you wish. And uh, that uh, that's really um, something useful if you do like your inventory counts, if you bring all the inventory um, for particular items uh, via um, different uh, methods, if it's an inventory adjustment, if it's manual adjustment, what have you, um, then you can be sure that uh, during the night that basically is done. Um, so let me go ahead and see if that uh, data flow uh, finished. So inventory update is done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, refresh this uh, product and we should see the quantity changed uh, in this on this product. And as you can see here, it's 1298 here. So that's the inventory uh, data flow. Now, uh, one last uh, data flow that I have here is the product related data flow and we call it product export. Uh, that means that uh, when we, uh, when you create an item in NetSuite and uh, you want that item to be created automatically in uh, WooCommerce, then you would uh, come to use this data flow. So uh, we support different uh, item types. Um, so for instance, on the, uh, on the NetSuite side, we support kit items, uh, inventory items, uh, non-inventory items, uh, matrix items. And uh, one, one uh, item type that we do not support is the grouped item. So just keep that in mind, uh, at least as of, as of now. Um, it's pretty uh, convoluted the way um, the grouped items are set up in NetSuite uh, and uh, the dynamic nature of, of it. Um, so with the item update, uh, create update functionality, uh, the way it works is that let's say that this item uh, never existed in um, in NetSuite, sorry, in WooCommerce, but you just created this item in uh, NetSuite. So what you want to do is, let's say you have 50,000 items in your uh, NetSuite product catalog, and uh, only three of them are WooCommerce related. So under the novel module WooCommerce tab, you can rename it anything you want to be descriptive. Uh, you can just specify that this is a WooCommerce item. That is going to isolate all of your items uh, that belong to WooCommerce. Um, and uh, also one cool thing that we're doing with this uh, data flow is uh, under the custom uh, tab, uh, again, it could be moved anywhere, but uh, we do have the WooCommerce item ID map. So in this case, the unique ID of this item is 491. So if you look at this product in uh, WooCommerce, see this is the unique ID of that product 491. So we actually tagging each individual uh, item between the two systems with this ID. And this is done uh, using this data flow right here. So it's, auto it's an automated process. So when you run this data flow, it will actually go and look at all of your items in WooCommerce and compare them against NetSuite. If it finds the unique matching SKU, then it will write that um, ID. I keep going to a different tab, but um, it, it will write that ID into this, uh, in, into this item ID map um, custom record. And that is how we know for sure that these two items are connected to each other. So they relate to each other uh, between the two systems. So um, with that, if you make a change here, if you change an item name, uh, let's say the display name or the price, uh, if you go to sales price here, you use different um, 
price levels. So if you change that, then the the connector will pick up the change and will update that from NetSuite to WooCommerce. Uh, again, all of these fields are pre-mapped, uh, and I, I usually say on all of our data flows uh, across our connectors, we try to pre-map as many fields as possible, but it's never the case that everybody is the same, right? So you run your business differently, so you may have a bunch of custom fields that still need to be pre-mapped or mapped additionally. So in this case, uh, I always uh, say like 80 to 90% of the fields are already pre-mapped, and then we work with you on uh, on the rest of the fields, like class or department could be different on a sales order, or maybe some custom fields that you have uh, that need to be mapped between the two systems. But basically that kind of gives you an idea of what fields are mapped already um, for a particular data flow. So I think with that, uh, I want to also quickly show you the um, quickly show you the um, advanced settings uh, of uh, this data flow, and uh, you can specify what currency you want to use. Uh, in this case, it's uh, USD, and uh, you can specify what price level. So in this case, we're using list price. So if we look at this item here, and uh, if we go to sales price, then list price is 100 bucks. Uh, that's what uh, we're referencing. Um, now we have like a very quick use case here. Sometimes uh, customers basically tell us, hey, uh, we don't want to run the item uh, data flow every time our price changes because that's going to basically look at all the fields that are mapped and try to write those values. We only need to update the price. So in this case, you can enable this data flow and uh, if you run some kind of promotion and uh, you need to change all of your pricing, uh, decrease it by 10% and then uh, you do it on the on the NetSuite side, then the connector will detect that as well um, and send that uh, info over to, um, to WooCommerce. Um, so that's pretty much it from a functionality perspective. Um, so just to, uh, I have a few uh, points to make, but uh, before I do that, I want to summarize uh, what I just went through. So I went through the uh, order um, flows uh, sending sales orders and customers uh, from uh, WooCommerce into NetSuite. We covered the fulfillment, uh, that is getting the tracking number back into WooCommerce. Uh, we looked at uh, billing, creating your cash sale or an invoice uh, automatically uh, in NetSuite. Um, and we looked at the inventory quantity update from uh, NetSuite into WooCommerce and the product creation and product update um, data flow. Um, several times uh, throughout uh, this uh, demo, I mentioned that um, the connector is going to detect certain change. So I want to uh, let you know that uh, this is the, the way we kind of think about this is that this is a NetSuite centric product. Uh, that means that uh, on the NetSuite side, um, if, if, we say, if we use a word import, that would be data going into NetSuite. If we use the word export, uh, that would be data going out of NetSuite. So with that, for any of the data flows that are export data flows, uh, basically information gets out of NetSuite and into another system, we do use the safe search functionality. And uh, these are all the data flows that uh, we currently use for all of this um, integration flows. So if you look at the fulfillment, then in the advanced settings, you will see this uh, safe search. If you look at the billing, uh, we also have this safe search that basically looks uh, at all the uh, sales orders and pending billing status. Uh, inventory, same way, and the product related flows, uh, same way. So we basically compile all the info using the uh, safe searches and the functionality available because that's the most flu uh, the most flexible and a sure way to get the right data in the right format. Um, so that's uh, that's one thing I wanted to mention. Um, also wanted to give you an idea, like for instance, you can have multiple users here. Uh, it's a multi-user environment, thanks to, again, to the platform. Uh, so you can invite a user uh, to use this integration. So they can be manager, they can be a, um, a, a an observer uh, to have like kind of monitoring rights, and that uh, makes it available. So that is uh, something that uh, is very handy uh, to, to have then um, 
some of the your team members can oversee the sales order flows some of them can oversee uh, the fulfillment flows for instance if if it need be okay. um, then uh, also you have the my notification section here my notification section here is pretty um, robust as well so you can select either all data flows or uh, and or connections so like for example if a connection goes down then you get notified into uh, your uh, account email basically saying hey something's wrong with the uh, connector so i deliberately uh, had one error here uh, just to show you how the error messaging works so in this case i was trying to send the same sales order into uh, netsuite uh, just so it errors out and I see this um, that the connector detected that and, and basically connector is saying uh, what are you talking about we already exported this uh, record out of WooCommerce and imported it into NetSuite and uh, the error message is basically telling you this record already exists now let's have let's let's uh, assume that it just happened now so in this case what's going to happen is if you have those uh, notifications enabled then and an email is going to go out to this uh, user basically notifying hey something's wrong you have one error message uh, in the uh, in the connector so at that point we expect you to get in and uh, you can uh, determine okay so i see that this record is already exported if you have done your due diligence then in that case you can say uh, i don't need to worry about it and i mark it resolved uh, if it was another error message, then of course you could uh, go ahead and uh, fix that and retry this error, and that will go into uh, NetSuite. So I think with that, uh, I am at a stopping point. Um, so I'd like to uh, basically pass things back to Rico and Sin and uh, see if we can uh, get uh, any questions that we can answer. uh thank you basong um so yeah so that gives you an overview of the pre-built integration and uh as i had mentioned you can also do the custom integration uh for flows that aren't listed on the pre-built connector uh we do have a few questions of the audience here uh sin do you want to quickly ask them and then we'll wrap up sure thank you rico um and thank you basong that was a very informative presentation uh, or demo of the platform of the integration sure thing. Uh, does so quick question for you does the integration support all of the payment gateways um yes good question so with the payment gateways it's uh, important to realize that uh, everything starts with your um with your front end um, so your WooCommerce can be configured to uh, authorize and capture funds at the time of sale right away. So in that case, you don't need uh, maybe like a payment gateway that is supported by NetSuite. Um, you can, uh, however, um, maybe your accounting team requires you to uh, authorize in WooCommerce, but uh, capture uh, in NetSuite. Uh, in that case, it is fine to do so, um, but uh, basically the use case here would be a gateway should be supported by both uh, systems because we will never pass a credit card number from uh, WooCommerce into NetSuite uh, in our integration. It's just due to PCI compliance uh, that we, we, we want to be true uh, to. So, um, in that case, if uh, a gateway is supported by both systems, WooCommerce and NetSuite, then what we can do is we can pass a token uh, from WooCommerce into NetSuite, and then uh, once you ship the product uh, out of NetSuite, then you can, that billing process that I was talking about, that is going to actually capture the funds and trigger the um, capture event uh, based on that um, payment method and the gateway. So, um, okay. yeah, so all is a strong word. Um, you just basically need to ensure that uh, if you do separate the authorization capture processes, then uh, just make sure that the gateway is supported by both systems. That's the kind of the core uh, requirement. Okay, that's good information to know. This is probably a good follow on question. Is multi currency supported? Uh, it, it, it is, yes. So basically you can specify uh, 
typically what we see on the WooCommerce side, uh, for instance, you can run, uh, again, everything depends on how you have your WooCommerce set up. So some companies uh, have a, a WooCommerce site that uh, is only dedicated to USD. Uh, they run another site that is dedicated to uh, to Euro or in another currency. Some of them uh, approach this differently. But from an integration perspective, uh, we do support multi-currency. So it's just a matter of configuring correct connector and, uh, and performing the tests uh, to make sure that everything uh, works well. Um, with that, uh, there are a few configurations that still need to be made on the sales tax uh, side of things, um, which uh, I think I didn't talk about that, but um, maybe uh, I can mention this now. Uh, sales tax is uh, also pretty uh, common use case here. So in um, it, it really depends on how your sales tax tables are set up in NetSuite versus WooCommerce. Um, We'd like to have them identical uh, between NetSuite and uh, WooCommerce, but uh, it really depends. Sometimes uh, they, the, the tax codes and the rates are different. Um, in this case, when we pass the uh, sales, over, sales order into NetSuite, it may result that um, sales tax uh, will have a variance. And we capture those variances in custom uh, tabs uh, on the sales order and uh, that can be used uh, to detect that um, but of course the best way is to either use uh, Avalara's Avatax product uh, to make sure that the tax rates are uh, identical in both systems uh, in which uh, case it's not hopefully it's not going to create any variances uh, on the sales tax there you go that's quite quite an answer. Thank you for that. Um, sure. So there's actually two questions here that are pretty similar, but I'm going to start off by asking, um, do you offer training or support on the platform? Um, I can um, answer on that one. Okay. So Lego does offer uh, integrator IO training, um, quite extensive, all the way from, you know, the very basics through very advanced um, custom code, on-prem integrations, um, uh, complex orchestration some between multiple applications things like that yeah okay and from a connector perspective it's uh, more so during the implementation we uh, we don't hide anything everything is right there on the platform and as we implement the connector and go through the uh, configuration and UET uh, that's when uh, our customers uh, designated uh, team members uh, that are involved in the implementation process. They learn how the connector works uh, and they learn to be self-reliant. Um, in many cases, what could happen is after the go live, uh, someone wants to change the payment methods or shipping methods. Um, on the platform, it's very easy to do. You don't have to call us and uh, wait like uh, for uh, an engineer to be assigned and change those uh, shipping payment methods you can do it yourself but of course if you do want us to do that then it's it's it is something that we uh, we help you out with after the go live okay basong that's maybe a good segue to this next question and that's what services uh does nova module offer Right, so uh, Nova Module, um, as the technology partner of Soligo and uh, an official partner of NetSuite um, as the end program, um, we do uh, offer custom integrations. So, for instance, if uh, it, it's it's not always just the connectors that we work on. Uh, in many cases, we we work with a lot of 3PLs, and uh, for you cannot build connectors for all the 3PLs out there in the world. So every case is a unique case. Um, so custom integrations is also what we uh, do uh, very, very well. Uh, we also partner with different organizations out there. Uh, they come to us and they say, uh, hey, we uh, kind of like how you guys uh, set up uh, and create the pre-built integrations connectors. Uh, can we work with you and uh, you can create maybe a white label connector for us um, so we all know that uh, we can start at basically expanding into the uh, NetSuite ecosystem. Um, so typically that would be like a 3PL uh, would, would do that. 
Uh, so we've done several uh, of those and successfully uh, implement uh, those. And uh, basically custom scripting, anything that complements the integration uh, process sometimes. Uh, NetSuite is a very unique and flexible and uh, customizable system. Uh, so every customer is different how they run their own businesses. So um, a, a lot of scripting, uh, the, the, there is a potential for uh, some scripting and then we've done uh, a lot of scripting for uh, our customers as well. Um, just within that suite. Great, and I'm gonna, one last question, unless there's additional questions out there. Um, is there pricing, is there a pricing sheet available? Uh, pricing is available, so there are two tiers, uh, so basically two price points. One is the um, annual subscription fee uh, that varies by the connector. Uh, and by the way, the connector that I demoed today, uh, that is the premium uh, edition of the connector. Um, we also have the standard price, uh, standard connector. So all those prices are listed on the website, uh, either Soligo or uh, Nova module. And uh, the second price point is the one-time implementation fee that uh, we just basically discuss this as we um, talk to uh, prospects because uh, some use cases are very uh, simple. Some of them are, unique and uh, more complex um, so that requires a different level of setup um, so yeah basically reach out to us uh, again uh, you can send an email to hello at novamodule.com or reach out to Soligo and then we can uh, hop on a phone call and discuss that uh, on a case-by-case -case basis thank you Basong Rico did you have any closing words no, thank you all for joining. I uh, hope we are in uh, touch in the near future, and I hope everyone has a good day. Thank you so much, Basong. Really appreciate it. Of course. Have a nice day. Thank you, Rico. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining.